Kenneth P. Vogel wrote an article for Politico which is classic. I don't mean classic in a good way. I mean classic hatchet job filled with innuendo against Harry Reid and supporting the Koch brothers. Now, he doesn't ever say in the article that he's supporting the Koch brothers or that he's even against Harry Reid. He's just writing about a political strategy in Washington. No, no, he's a neutral reporter at Politico. <laughs> now, the title of the article is Behind Harry Reid's War Against the Koch Brothers. But look, you can have that title and go in a lot of different directions. So let's read into the article and see how it goes. Um, <laughs> now, uh, he uh, starts out fairly clearly in describing Harry Reid. He says Reid had already developed a knack for vilification as political strategy. Okay, now, if you don't know it, and we've been covering it on the show, Harry Reid has been going after the Koch brothers, saying, hey, these guys are secretly buying our government. They're spending hundreds of millions of dollars in order to influence politicians so that they can get things like lack of regulation, they're in the energy business, lower taxes. Now, that has the advantage of being 100% true. I can't imagine that Kenneth P. Vogel or anyone else could actually disagree with that. It's a fact that they spend hundreds of million dollars every election cycle for the last two, three election cycles. I believe in 2012 they spent over 400 million dollars. You think they did it for their health, for their ideology? <laughs> no, Lebowski, they, it's all about the money. They want to buy these guys. Do they want lower taxes? Of course, that's a fact. Of course, they want lower taxes. Do they want deregulation? That's a fact. They want deregulation. Does that help their bottom line? To the tune of billions of dollars, both of those things. Is that mentioned anywhere in this article? Of course not. No, Harry Reid is doing a vilification strategy against the poor Koch brothers. We're just getting started. So he says right off the bat in the first page, Harry Reid, quote, takes liberties with facts. Really? Which ones? Can you give us an example? No, no, I'm just throwing that out there. Oh, I'm me, I'm just a poor little neutral objective reporter. I don't know what you're talking about. And then he says the democratic strategy is, quote, increasingly desperate. I mean, when the Koch brothers spend $200 million in this election cycle, that's not desperate. No, no, well over 200 million, by the way, okay? No, no, when the Democrats have the temerity to fight back against all that money pouring in against them, desperate, desperate. Gee, I wonder where Vogel and Politico stand on this. Well, if you're not clear about their views on the left, uh, let's take a look at this sentence. The professional left, which had spent years agitating for a high level Democratic campaign against the Kochs, cheered and urged them on. First of all, professional left is, was used, yes, by the Obama administration because they don't like people on their left flank either, they, they especially don't like them. Politico, <laughs> people on the left, ah, they're not for the Chamber of Commerce, they, boogeyman radicals, the professional left, dismissive, like professional, yeah, of course they're urging on Harry Reid, these radicals over here. All right, let's keep reading, okay. Um, the results has been a highly unusual election year campaign against a couple of relatively unknown private citizens. Whom Reid and his Democrats are seeking to make into caricatures of a Republican Party that on issue after issue caters to the very rich at the expense of everyone else. So the Koch brothers are not these guys who are using money to their advantage and, bri and it's bribes, it's legal bribes, not illegal bribes, okay? But they give all that money to make sure Republicans win. Again, what, for their health? You really believe it's for their libertarian ideology? Are you that painfully naive? Okay, oh yeah, I just gave $290 million. I don't expect any return on that money. No, no, no. I'm only a businessman that's got, what, are they up to over $80 billion, right? No, they wouldn't expect a return on investment. But no, they're just private citizens. That's all they are. These poor guys. And now they're looking to make caricatures out of them, like they're really rich and influencing the Republican Party. That again would appear to be a rock solid fact. Okay. Um, they explained that uh, this strategy has been shaped and reinforced by Reed staff, including former operatives at the Liberal Center for American Progress, which had pioneered Coke bashing politics years earlier. Now, look, you can say I'm reading it in a you know biased way, but look at the words. Okay, you say, hey, liberal, maybe he meant liberal in a wonderful way. Okay. Coke bashing politics, like these poor private citizens, they're being bashed for what, for what, really? Yeah, I'd like to know for what, why didn't you write in the article, okay? And they're not just people who worked at the Liberal Center for American Progress, they're former operatives. Oh, cloak and dagger stuff, they go to uh, one of the, uh, the operatives from uh, 
Think Progress, uh, Faz Shakir, and they explain. Shakir ran uh, Cap's blog, Think Progress, from 2007 to through 2012, and deputized one of his bloggers to participate in an ad, in an ad hoc coalition of liberal groups that so sought to make boogeymen of the coast. <laughs> Okay, why would you caricature these guys and make them into boogeymen, you political operative? If you so fast, Shakir, which I have, let me, and I like him, so I should admit that to you, okay? I'm being honest with you guys, unlike these guys who are burying their agenda, not very deep, by the way, in almost every sentence of this ridiculous article. So I know Faz, I, he's a nice guy, I agree with his ideology, right? But if you saw him, you'd be like, this is the political operative that's devious and making all this stuff happen. He's a pleasant guy who writes things that are absolutely true. It's not turning the uh, coax into boogeymen to say, hey, wait a minute now. Look, here's their donations to politicians. Here's what po the politicians turn around and do for them legislatively. Here's the profit that they make off of that. You see, that's what journalists are supposed to be doing. But we have almost none of them left. We have these political guys disguised as journalists who are, in fact, running this huge operation, which is just a giant ad for the Chamber of Commerce and the Koch brothers and all those big donors. How can we help you? Oh, Fast Shakir's a political operative. He's making you into a boogeyman with all those damned facts. <laughs> it almost makes me want to cry for the Koch brothers who are so innocent. Uh, they explain that this is foolish, you shouldn't even do this. Part of the reason they write articles like this is to try to dissuade Democrats from effective strategies. Like, don't you dare actually fight back. They say the risky strategy on which Democrats are hinging their midterm election hopes. <laughs> Very risky. Well, if it's so risky and you don't mind, why'd you write the whole article about it? You'd be like, oh, okay, look at this idiot Harry Reid with his stupid strategy. Go forward, Harry. If I was his opponent, I'd say that, right? I'd be like, great, thanks for the help. But of course, Vogel pretends he's not Harry Reid's opponent. He's not pro Koch brothers. No, he's just a neutral guy, just loading up every sentence with the most loaded words you've ever seen in your entire life. Okay, so now he's got to bring Harry Reid's wife into it. Because if you listen to your wife, <laughs> you know. Uh, you're a little unhinged, I mean, it's not even a political person you're taking advice from, it's kind of sad. They say his wife, Landra Gould, also helped develop something of a fascination with the brothers. See that, it's not just that his wife says to Harry Reid, hey, look, these Koch brothers, they're up to no good. She's developed a fascination with the Koch brothers. You know, she, the women, oh, they, they don't know. So, she, oh, look at this, the Koch brothers, oh, I'm so fascinated. This is, I mean, Great A hatchet job. Okay. Still, Reed's attacks have drawn cries of McCarthyism from around the political world, including MSNBC host Joe Scarborough and Mother Jones editor Daniel Schulman. Okay. Uh, yeah, we saw Joe Scarborough, who also shockingly loves incredibly rich Republican donors, and he defended them on Morning Joe. Wow. So Harry Reid must be McCarthy. Now you could write that sentence in a hundred different ways. You could say Joe Scarborough, who's a former Republican congressman, unsurprisingly backed the Republican donors. Or you could write it as, see Harry Reid's McCarthy ways exposed by Joe Scarborough. MSNBC's Joe Scarborough. Now, Mother Jones, uh, Daniel Schulman, I did not see his opinion on it, uh, so I can't comment on that, but that's so convenient to throw in there. See, we got one, one liberal to agree with us. Mother Jones, Mother Jones, one, see McCarthy, Harry Reid's McCarthy, we're right there wrong. I can't tell which side Kenneth Bogle's on, it's so unclear in this article. All right, then they go to, if that wasn't clear enough, Chip and Dan Heath, they claim, they claim that he went, these guys who are businessmen, uh, business messaging gurus, supposedly, uh, went and talked to uh, the Democrats, and they say their breakout book, Made to Stick: Why Some Ideas Survive and Others Die, asserts that in order to gain traction for ideas, it's helpful to replicate some facets of urban legends and conspiracy theories. They encourage readers to make their ideas about people rather than abstractions, and to tap into emotions such as fear, disgust, and suspicion. So. The Democrats are tapping into fear and disgust and suspicion and using emotion. But not the poor Koch brothers or the Republicans who have been demolishing President Obama for about five to six years now straight. Oh, he's Canadian, he's communist, he's socialist, he's Marxist, he's Maoist, he hates this country. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at Harry Reid using emotion. Disgusting. Can you believe that? I'm still listening to these gurus talking about urban legends and conspiracy theories. You wrote an article about how Democrats might be listening to conspiracy theories, and you just didn't 
bother to mention the thousand conspiracy theories on the right. He wasn't born in this country, the long form birth certificate, you name it now, he's on purpose bringing in immigrants from Honduras and Guatemala to what, for those children to vote in our election? I don't know. All the insane conspiracy, th no, 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 it's the Democrats who do it. You see, this is my point, this is why I love this article, because it, it, it's a testament, it's a self parody. It's a testament to what Politico does day in, day out. They print this garbage as if they're unbiased, and then they take these huge ads from industry sources, they plaster them all over their paper, and they make a ton of money, they make millions of dollars from those ads, and then they turn around and write this and go, what, 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 what do you mean, we're neutral? Uh, I just talked about how Harry Reid is, does the uh, politics of vilification and listens to his kooky wife who's fascinated by the Koch brothers, and that they uh, are you know, playing on emotions. What, what, I don't know what you're talking about, I'm so unbiased. Now, this is actually in a lot of ways more damaging than Fox News, because Fox News is obvious, right? But everybody in Washington thinks like Politico is like, oh my God, Politico, oh wow, oh, they're so unbiased, oh, they're centrist, they're centrist. Okay, um, I'm not done yet, <laughs> sit back down. Uh, Reid's focus seems at least partly based in sheer politics, born out of fear that this vulnerable members would be crushed under the deluge of attack ads from coke based nonprofits, including Americans for Prosperity and Freedom Partners that are expected to spend $290 million before election day. Now, I put that in there because that was literally the only paragraph where they mentioned that the Koch brothers is, are spending some money against the Democrats. Why would Harry Reid want to do this crazy, risky electoral strategy? These guys are spending $290 million to destroy Harry Reid's party. You would be stupid not to fight back. And in fact, the Democrats have been that stupid for decades. I'm gonna tell you why, because when that's the last sentence we're gonna get to, okay? But here's this guy who writes this whole five page article. And in one paragraph, but by the way, they're spending $290 million against Harry Reid. Anyway, what a crazy guy Harry Reid is for fighting back. But they don't say this fighting back doing political vilification and attacks by political operatives against private citizens, Koch brothers. All right, and finally, at one point in the article, they get to one of the issues as to why the Democrats don't fight back and why the entire establishment has now turned on Harry Reid, as evidenced by Politico and Morning Joe. I mean, if there's two things that speak for the establishment more, I don't know what they are. I mean, those guys are establishment 101, moneyed interest in Washington 101. They say, and they've uh, even created this tactic, discomfort among liberal big money donors and operatives. Hmm. See, it makes the entire establishment uncomfortable when you attack any donor, because the establishment loves the donors. They don't serve you, and according to a Princeton research survey since 1979, about 1800 different policies, the American people's opinion has had approximately 0% effect. Whereas donor opinion has had a direct correlation to policy. 40 years of donor opinion running this country. So if you dare ever attack a donor, the politicos of the world will come down on you with a hammer. In this case, they brought in Kenneth Vogel with a hatchet. And he burned it in Reed's back. How dare you criticize our beloved donors who own this government? Well, thank you, Politico. At least now we know where you stand.